Okay, we're back here, and we're going to look a little more at the uh, CPIO command. So um, we've just found, figured out how to use find here. Oops, back here. So then we have to pipe that into CPIO. And we can do that using something like this. So here's our find command. And this is being typed into CPIO, or piped into CPIO. We're using the minus O option, which says output an archive. And we're using V that says uh, give us a listing as we do this. And there's probably some other options that we might want to use if we're doing this a lot in it as well. I think the lowercase c is kind of a compatibility option that makes it work better with non-Linux, Unixes. Um, you know, um, it takes some study to see actually what options you really do want to use at the time. Anyway, here's the idea. Now, that should make a file called summer dot cpio, and indeed it does, and it creates a file that's something like that length for me. Um, I could actually, we see that this is a pipe. Um, at this point, if I put in slash dev slash, I think the tape drive on a Linux machine, I think is rmt, well, I don't have a tape drive. Or maybe it's MT. Um, I, I don't have a tape drive, so I'm not sure what. I don't remember what they use. I think it's RMT0 for the tape drive um, for the first, like a SCSI tape drive. But I'm, but, but I'm afraid I don't remember. It's been too long since I put a tape drive on a system. But this is the command you'd use to pipe to uh, basically put your CPIO archive on a tape drive. Another thing you could do, this is just going to the output. So actually, let's look at what the archive looks like. Uh, we'll do that by using our good friend B OD minus BC. And this will just spit out what the archive looks like on the screen. Actually, let's do more. So we'll do a little bit at a time. This is basically the binary of our archive. Well. That's kind of boring, but we, we get an idea of what it looks like. Or I could actually pipe this using SSH to another machine. And, um, and that would pipe the whole stream to another machine. And, um, and then I'd use DD or something like that uh, equals dot OF equals slash dev slash rtm0. And that way, I could pipe it to another machine and put it on a tape drive on a different machine. That's assuming I don't have a tape drive on my local machine. I've only got a couple tape drives in my network, and, and I've got to pipe it to another machine. That works fine. Um, there's also options. But I could I could not find the options to make it do multiple tape drives. Uh, that frustrates me because on um, most Unixes there are options to allow this to go on uh, to be spread across multiple tapes. But uh, maybe they no longer exist in um, in Linux's edition. I'm just really not sure. Okay, um, that finishes what I had to say about about CPIO. It, and I really didn't say too much about it. I didn't tell you how to restore the CPIO or how to use CPIO in a pass-through mode. But I'll let you explore that. It, it is, um, it's in our book. And, and by using the man pages, or actually the man pages in my Linux aren't very complete. You have to use uh, the command info. CPIO to get the um, most up-to-date CPIO, or go to the um, go to the, the go to the web and find uh, pages on CPIO. Um,
learning CPIO does take time. It is it, yeah. I. It's like learning Emacs. Uh, only it's not as bad as that. But CPIO does take some time to learn to use, and and um, and there's no question about it. That's why most people today use TAR, and we use TAR and. And people that do use CPIO, people like me, use TAR whenever we can because TAR is a lot easier and, and smoother to use. OK, with TAR, if I want to make a, um, um, if I want to save this summer directory with TAR, all I have to do is type TAR. I probably have to go over here and uh, figure out how tar works by typing man space tar. And it gives me a whole lot of information on tar. But what it will end up as is I'll want to type tar CVF. C says make an archive. V says give me that listing of lots and lots of lines of output. And F says the first argument in tar is the name of the tar archive, which we will make be um, um, summer um, 2011.tar. And then we'll, the directory we're going to put on there, or the file, um, will be summer 2011. Um, 2011. And that will catch the whole directory. If I wanted to, I can name another file and put on another file. Um, CIS star, uh, that would be fine. And that's going to put on the two files up here, as well as the directory. I could put star and catch everything. Um, I can put as many files at the end of that as I want to put on the archive. If I just put star, it will catch everything. And uh, notice, I don't have to use the find command. There's no piping all this stuff with the find command and everything to get the file names. That is really cool. Uh, let me just do a simple archive here. There we go. And that should give me an archive here. Let's see if we've got that. Oh, indeed, we do have this. And here it is. And it's about the same length as the CPIO one, and it's a little longer. Tar must just be a little sloppier, and you know keeps more labels or something. So um, now, suppose I wanted to send somebody this to somebody over the internet using a 300 baud modem, where well, even using my um, um, connection, which is fat high bandwidth. Probably what I might want to do is archive that thing, or I I compress that thing. I would compress that using gzip tar, and then I would probably save that into a file. And uh, this should be tar dot gz. However, the tradition with Unix people is they use the suffix tgz. If you ever see a tgz file, um, and I'll make I'll use the compression a minus nine um, compression uh, to make it tighter. But if you ever see the um, um, t gz suffix. That means that that is a gzipped tar file. And so the way you break that up is by typing something like gzip, g unzip, I'm sorry, this guy. Let's see just what we got here. Oh, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. Uh, this line up here, the last line I typed in was in error. What I meant to put in was, um, was this and redirect the, um, um, and catch the input 
compress the input, and then do the output. I didn't do that, so I've got a mess here. But we'll we'll straighten that mess out. So let's un-gzip um, this guy. Then we get the summer.tar back. Notice summer that this guy here was it's zero bytes long. It's zero bytes long since I didn't redirect anything into it. And then let's go back and run that command that I wanted to run here, where we do it this way with file redirection. This is um, I, I like this way. There's another a number of other ways of doing it, but I prefer. I kind of like to do it this way. And here we see the compressed file and the uncompressed file. Notice the uncompressed file is longer than the compressed file. Is there ever a time when the compressed file could be longer than the uncompressed file? Yes. Um, if you've got very, very short files, the compression is so any, um, it takes so much overhead in. Um, dictionaries and and stuff that actually the on a very very short file the uncompressed could be longer than the compressed but or the compressed could be longer than the uncompressed but that's rare um, on text files and stuff usually the compression is about 50 percent you'll get about half um, these are binaries so they don't do as well okay. I should mention one other, a couple other things. One is that if I just want to look at what is in a tar archive, I would do this. The minus T option says um, just look, just list what's on the archive. It doesn't actually save anything. It doesn't do anything like that. If I would, let me make a junk area so I can work in. Let me go down into the junk area. Let me copy um, summer dot tar. Well, actually, we'll copy both of these down here. Okay, let me uh, um, rec retrieve the. Um, Extract the archive. XVF summer. I guess tar. What happens if I did T T G Z? It would work if I do tar. What is, so let's try it with just the T with the compressed one. Um, what do you know? It works. I wasn't aware that that would work. What you're really supposed to do in that case is use the other um, flag, Z, and that will restore that for you. Um, some versions may work if you don't use the Z, but by all rights, you're supposed to use the Z. And if you, the Z option says do a compression as you build the archive and read um, do a decompression as you read the archive. So um, that that is an option to be used. Um, okay, and sure enough, what we have is reasonable links. So let's go up here. Let's remove junk because we don't need that. And um, that takes care of our discussion of, um, of um, TAR. And um, TAR can, um, you can either keep TAR as, what they, as the .tar files or .tgz files. Those are commonly referred to in slang terms as tar balls. And you'll see lots and lots of tar balls to, on the internet to be downloaded. Okay, that finishes this part of the video. Bye-bye.